Yesterday's British Grand Prix showed us another horrifying accident and luckily no one got seriously hurt. But looking closer at the crashed Alfa Romeo of Zhou Guan Yu, something happened there that should have never happened. Formula 1 cars have open cockpits and the safety concept is that the driver's helmet stays underneath the line between roll structure and monocoque. That's the same from Formula Student to F1. The introduction of the halo structure brought another component to further increase the height of this line and to protect the driver better. And now let's have a look how the Alfa Romeo looked like after yesterday's crash. We can see that the halo structure is heavily scratched but still intact. The roll structure of the car, however, is just gone. And that's really shocking. The roll structure is supposed to be the hardest and strongest component of the car. And before the halo introduction, it was the only protection for the driver's helmet, in case of a rollover. So how does this roll structure look like and how does it work? Years ago, these roll structures were welded tubes underneath the bodywork that also housed the main air intake. This structure is then bolted onto the monocoque. Today, these structures have higher safety requirements and pretty complex shapes. So the only way to produce these is to metal sinter them. But like before, they are bolted onto the chassis. Now there are two main designs. I can have a triangular structure or a single pole. The triangular design is the most popular one since the reintroduction of naturally aspirated engines 30 years ago. The triangular shape gives a strong structure and enough space in the middle to integrate the main air intake for the engine. But every now and then, there are teams coming up with single pole designs, like Mercedes in 2010, Force India in 2011, and Sauber in 2017, 18 and 19. In 2020 and 21, Sauber went back to the triangular design before they reintroduced the single pole for this year. The advantage of a pole design is that Instead of having two structures, you only have one, and hence less frontal area. So there is potential to use the space above the driver more efficiently. The pole can easily pass the load tests and can also weigh less than the triangular design. But the one huge disadvantage, which is not assessed in tests, is that if a car with a pole design goes into the gravel upside down, the pole digs into the gravel more easily because of its smaller cross-sectional area. That's a risk teams are willing to take, and this is not what caused the problem yesterday. If we look closer at the crash, we can see that Alfa Romeo is hitting the track with the roll structure and it stays intact. But as the car slides along, on the pole, and turns, the pole simply breaks off, and suddenly the car is much lower. This happened while still being on the tarmac, and after around 2 seconds of sliding. If we take a closer look at the images, we can even see the pole structure flying away in the moment Joe's car turns around. Grinding it down wasn't the issue here, but a heavy, fully fueled F1 car that stressed the wall structure for a longer time and while doing so, changed load direction. The car was now mainly resting on the halo structure and slid into the gravel where it started rolling. Like we said before, these wall structures are usually bolted on top of the monocoque. It's hard to see on these pictures, but on the Alfa Romeo we cannot see any bolts, and it seems like this structure is glued to the monocoque. So it looks like FIA and Alfa Romeo seriously have to take a closer look at the roll structure mounting and side load tests. This important safety structure of a Formula 1 car shouldn't fail like this. Another takeaway from yesterday is the small gap between catch fence and tire barrier, which left Joe trapped in his car. Luckily, the wreck did not start to burn, so they had time to get him out. Let's see how F1 will react to the lessons we learned yesterday and see you at the next video.